Taiko no Tasujin is a long time Japanese rhythmic game focusing on banging a drum to the sound of music. Featuring wide range of songs from anime openings to classical music in the series, it has been such a smash hit that it's made its way over from Japan to America. My previous review of Taco no Tasujin was focused solely on the broken motion controls, which led to a very negative review. These motion controls have not been improved in any version since over the years uh, since these adventure games came out and the new version also came out. However, I've already made that complaint known and you can watch that original review to hear me talk about it. Linked in the description below. What I want to know is how the series utilizing a drum controller and how the RPG, RPG elements change this gameplay. Well, it turns out that this changes everything. It turns a frustrating game, it turns a frustrating game that's a mess into one of the most enjoyable experiences I had in these reviews since Ring Fit Adventure. For self-improvement, crafts, and fitness games, go ahead and turn on YouTube and watch chat. The Taiko no Tasujin Adventure series combines the classic drumming game and an adventure RPG. It's like the Ring Fit Adventure to Wii Fit. The main gameplay of the series has always been drumming with Taiko, which we in America refer to as this specific kind of Japanese style drum. The gameplay has you hit the middle of the drum for the dons and hits the sides of the drum for kas as they reach this little circle. So you're like boom, 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 ka, ka, boom, 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 ka, ka. There are other types such as like repeaters or drum rolls where you hit as fast as you can during a certain period. In the adventure mode, building combos of hits correlates to attacks of the characters you choose to fight as. I must say that the combination of a fighting RPG mixed with a rhythmic game is an absolute genius one that I want every game to incorporate, not just this or Ring Fit Adventure. Give me a Dance Dance Revolution Adventure RPG and I'll eat that up like crazy. A Just Dance RPG? That sounds like a dream in my book. Every game should take inspiration from this game, and I would be just one happy reviewer and weigh like probably 20 pounds less just because I love these adventure type games. Watch, I'll be like a supermodel thin. Eh. Battling your way through different characters is how you get to different points within the story mode. The story of Taiko no Tasujin Rhythmic Adventure 1 is nothing special. You play as Don, the personification of the drum controller that you'll be using if you're using one, otherwise it'll be just like the drum that you're supposed to play as while you're waggling the Joy-Cons. You go to the Taiko Festival when your brother Ka gets kidnapped along with some clock dude. From there, you meet this ugly rabbit thing that has the ability to open up portals through time. You must follow the rabbit through time to rescue your brother and fix the clock ticky. Along the way, your quest morphs into stopping Professor Timedine to trying to destroy the world. No pressure, you know, he's just trying to destroy the world. You just gotta stop him. No pressure, am I right? The whole story aims to have this an excuse to travel through different times and unique areas. Again, the story is nothing special, but the expressive cutscenes and awesome but lengthy interactions makes the game and the story worth it. The areas in this game are very unique from each other, making each world feel unique. You go from ancient Japan to medieval Europe to prehistoric lands where the dinosaurs rule and so much more. Along the way through your journey, you'll meet new characters such as Joan of Arc, Cleopatra, and some weird like dinosaur talking dude who will join you on your journey. My favorite interactions of this game 
are just when you like return home after beating a level with all the characters that you met so far and just interacting with each other and in a modern Japan. They're like, oh wow, you have like flying planes in the sky? That's crazy. Or them be looking at comic books being like, this is crazy, look at this comic book. And that actually relates to the next level. It's just really cool. The interactions between characters in the party are a lot of fun. Still, the further into the game you get, the more and more characters you get, which just becomes too crowded with so many characters no longer getting that many important speaking roles until the very, very end of the game where you get to talk to everyone at the Taiko Festival. That's probably my favorite part just because you get to see everyone's conclusion. These main characters can point to combat to fight enemies. As I said, the fighting in this game is based on getting massive combos in the standard Taiko no Tasujin gameplay. Each character has different combo requirements on attack, with heavy characters needing the longest combos, but of course, they're hitting the hardest, way harder than any of the faster ones. It would be best to have a nice combination of super heavy hitters and nice quick punches to bring down your enemies fast. Once you do bring down those enemies, you have a chance of getting them to convert it over to your party. Over time, you'll increase your friendly stats and battles, unlocking different abilities or gifts from these characters that you defeated in the past. What's weird is that in this game, that all of the random characters you meet are way stronger than like the key characters in the story mode. It's why if you look at the gameplay now, you won't see any of the main characters in my party. It's all about that werewolf grandma, as they are the most OP character in the game, in my opinion. Uh, Alpha or all, the key characters are like always the weakest, and you don't have to use them unless there's like a specific battle, usually the boss battle at the end, that requires them. One of my least favorite parts is how you get into battle in this game. I love games like the Tales of series or Ring Fit Adventure, where you can actually see the enemies and the battles happen in front of you. In this game, you can get attacked and into battle if you just walked around any random area that's not a town. It's 2023 and RPG games don't display enemies on the screen. It's annoying as hell for someone like me who likes that feature. Also, battles happen a bit too frequently in this game, in my opinion. You can always flee, but for this challenge, I couldn't, seeing as the drumming is actually what's causing uh, my heart rate to go up and gets counted on my Apple Fitness. That's the actual fitness component of this game for me. Lastly, since you can't see the enemies, you can quickly get into battles that you didn't expect. With the drum controller, you have to play the RPG part with the Joy-Con and then switch from holding the Joy-Con to holding the uh, drumsticks um, just fast. There's no like countdown in the settings, so you sometimes have to be like, you're walking, you're walking, walking, battle, put the thing, go, it's like, you just give me like a countdown of three seconds so that way I can quickly move. Once you're about to beat a level, you must go up against a boss. These things are super hard and take lots of time. I have to change the difficulty settings down to easy in order for me to beat them. I normally can play all these songs in medium to hard difficulty, uh, but the main issue with the bosses is the bosses block most of the screen where you can see the upcoming notes, making it hard for me and my old man reflexes to hit the right notes. I love a good challenge, but I don't have the reflexes that I used to as a youngin. However, if you are up to the challenge, some of these songs and bosses in the later game are just a beast and a half and just a ton of fun. Playing certain songs in the story mode unlocks them in Taiko mode, their standard play through the whole song mode. A lot of these songs in this game are also available in Taiko no Tasujin Drum and Fun with the addition of three unique songs that won't be in either of these games. And that's three songs for both Rhythm Adventure 1 and 2 for a total of six. Honestly, I love story modes in games, especially in fitness games, where that kind of concept is a bit rare. So this game is pretty much made for me. If you haven't played any Taiko no Tasujin games in the series, I highly recommend grabbing this as your first pickup. Again, you have to use the drum controller as the motion controllers are just awful. 
I bought the Armor 3 knockoff drums with the newest Rhythm Festival game for just 35 bucks on sale. That's normally 65. The drum is decently solid for being a knockoff and I had no issue playing with it. So if you want a cheap alternative to the Hori controller, pick that one up. I play the game for 23 days for an average of 21 minutes daily. According to my Apple Watch, I burned around 170 active calories per session. Again, I played most of the time on medium difficulty, so playing on a harder difficulty, expect that calorie average to go way up higher. I didn't burn nearly as much as I did with something like Wii Fit or Ring Fit Adventure, but I got an arm workout with this puppy. Not to mention all the hand-eye coordination improvement by playing with these Rhythmic Music games. From a fitness perspective with this series, I'd say it's definitely unlike the lower half of the game series. It's not nearly as much as uh, Just Dance or any of those Dance Dance Revolutions, but hey, this is fun as hell. Here's my sheet for the game if you want to review that and kind of base your calorie average on that. Again, I'm a 300 pound man, so you know, take that into consideration. So guys, that's it for today's review on Taco No Tossigen Rhythmic Adventure Pack 1. I will also review the second adventure pack and then dive into the Rhythm Festival game. I went from being Wari on the first game to being a Taiko no Tassigen fiend thanks to the purchase of this drum controller. Seriously, this purchase makes or breaks the series for someone like me and for most people. If you have any other ideas on any reviews you want to see from me, then please leave them in the comments below. I will review pretty much every recommendation sent to me as long as it's legal. Subscribe to the YouTube channel and don't forget to like every single one of my videos. Visit my website at jack jenkinscom Lastly, have a fantastic day everyone. All you guys watching are just so amazing and hey, I know what you're thinking. This is about self-improvement challenges, right? Yeah, that's what this channel is, me doing self-improvement challenges. But you're thinking like, how does that improve us? Well, we can improve whew, together. That's my catchphrase for those new to the channel. We can improve together. All right. Ugh, I have to lean because I'm too tall for some of this green screen stuff. So the head of my head just constantly gets caught off. So I have to like crouch down like this. Oh, it's horrible. Just behind the scenes funs with me.